Hello, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Philip Hess. I work as Metro Director of Sales at the John Roselli Showroom in New York. Thank you for joining us, learning about the ease of custom design with Peter Fasano. Joining me today is Reed Stewart, the co-owner of Peter Fasano. Welcome, Reed. How are you? Today? Thank you, Philip. It's great to be here. Appreciate you having me on. And I know everybody's probably a little fatigued from watching Talking Heads the last few days, all the election coverage, but hopefully this is a little more entertaining and, um, and some fun things to talk about over the next half hour. Yeah, yeah, great. And there's a great story of evolution with the Peter Fasano brand from hand painting on fabric in the 70s in a studio here in New York to eventually moving to the Berkshires and continuing the handcrafted look throughout the decades into eventually being bought by you and Peter Webster. Can you just tell us a little bit about this journey? Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, it happened four years ago that we, um, that we made the acquisition of Peter Fasano and, and it was a, a wonderful partnership. And so my background, I, I was family friends with Peter Webster for a long time and, and he ran Webster and Company with his father in Boston, one of the largest showrooms in New England. And uh, he represented and sold the Peter Fasano brand for about 16 years. So he and he and Peter Fasano were quite close. And, and when Peter Fasano was looking to retire and, and sell the business a few years back, he called Peter Webster and said, hey, I'd love to sell to a friend. I know you'd like to do something on your own. And at that time, I was looking to do the same thing. Um, I was at uh, Ralph Lauren. And so we, we kind of teamed up and, and acquired the business and, and had a period where Peter Fasano you know, stayed on the business and helped, uh, you know, kind of indoctrinate us into, you know, his whole philosophy and his wonderful story. And like you hinted, he had kind of a neat story where in the late seventies, he was, he was an artist, he was a painter and he was hand painting textiles. And so he literally would tell the story, he and his wife, Elizabeth, you know, they were in their kitchen in the Lower East Side and they'd pull off the, you know, the kitchen door, put it on sawhorses and literally he would paint one by one each textile, every yard of it. And uh, eventually he then, you know, took some space in the Flatiron District and, and had a wonderful loft. And I actually, you know, a couple of years ago, met someone in San Francisco who had been loft mates with Peter and said, you know, Peter would take it all day long. And then at five o'clock, he'd hand the keys over to me and I use it as an artist loft for the rest of the night. So it was kind of a neat story of, of creators starting out. And then uh, Peter at that point then went to work for a number of high profile designers. Uh, like Albert Hadley and Harry Hinson and David Easton. So he really got indoctrinated into true, you know, kind of pattern design at that point. And, uh, and then about 91, uh, Alan Campbell actually said to Peter, why don't you come up to the Berkshires? There's a lot of great things going on up here. And Tillet Textiles was up there and still are to this day. So in 91, Peter moved up there and started a hand screening facility in his own formal brand at that point. And, uh, and it was neat. And so he's, he's had an iconic brand all these years. And my mother is a designer a, uh, for, for several decades. So I grew up not only with, you know, having a mother going to the D&D building all the time, not knowing what that meant at eight years old, what's a DD, and d But, you know, she'd come home with all the Clarence House pencils and Brunswick, and that was kind of neat. But I still remember her using Peter Pisano on jobs, uh, the iconic dog wallpaper that we had that was in movies she used on a number of jobs and and so it was kind of neat that I was aware of the brand and then all these years later um you know taking ownership of it with Peter Webster so uh it was neat getting to know Peter uh you know more for me and understanding his method his his you know eye on things and and what he said to us is you know guys I've had a good run and you know it's been a great brand but it's time for someone to put new energy into it uh, obviously, times have changed and, and you know, whether that's, uh, you know, patterns, whether it's marketing, whether it's colorways. And so we really, uh, you know, tried to inject new life into it. And, and he said, guys, you've got my blessing to do what, you know, you need to do. And, and uh, you know, for us, it what was most important is, you know, if you're going to acquire a brand like this is to keep the DNA of it. Not everybody does that. We thought it was critical. Why would you change, you know, what's important? So for us, when we came out with our, our first collection, and by that time Peter had moved to the West Coast, you know, we really tried to to kind of do him, you know, proud and keep his DNA. And and uh, and when Peter saw the collection, which was you know was fresher, we went on to Oyster Grounds and and bright colors. He said, "Love what you guys are doing," and I joked with him. I said, "Peter, I think we're doing even more hand painterly things, you know, than you did in your last collection." That's how you know much it mattered to us to kind of keep the vein of of what he was doing. And I'll 
kind of show you a little bit of uh, examples. So this is um, this is one of the, the patterns that Peter had in a collection about you know 12 or 13 years ago. And, and you can see it, you know, it's, it's not quite as current a color scheme and things and, and it had been discontinued and folks kept, you know, calling up and emailing and saying, you know, we love that pattern. Do you guys still make it? And we, you know, we really had an affinity for it. Pete and I did. Um, and we said, let's, how do we reinterpret that today? Cause there's something great there. And this is from an African mud cloth. And so what we did was um, we put it on a different ground. Um, so you can see here, this was, we put it on an oyster ground. We actually hand painted it. Um, so we redid the design where the original was, was more of a, a clean, you know, thing. We, we took our own paintbrush with our artisans. We put a drop shadow, we exploded the, the uh, scale of it and it's been mm -hmm. a hugely successful pattern. We also um, and did it a little bit differently for wallpaper. We, we, instead of the drop shadow, we use a different type of brush and, and really felt it was important to you know, take kind of a bespoke approach to, you know, something that might work on a wall a little bit differently than it works on, on upholstery. And, and then even in grass cloth, we did it, we got this natural jute, uh, which is a wonderful raw, you, you know, uh, substrate. And, and uh, we, this is the only pattern we put on it. We said, this is right. It does justice to the pattern. Um, and then we also, you know, had fun, as I mentioned with colors, um, we said, let's, let's do some fun things. So, we brought out a great range of colors. These are just a few of them. Um, and, you know, no one would typically do this with a mud cloth design, kind of an ethnic design, but that's a little bit of, of you know, what we felt was important is Peter was always a little bit of a trailblazer, always doing things a little bit differently. And so, you know, we've always tried to look at, at common themes and motifs and put a different spin on it. What's the, what's the Peter Fasano spin on things? And, uh, it was neat, actually. The last design he he did while we were together, and I don't have it in front of me, but was a fretwork design that his wife Elizabeth Hamilton had in her line, and it was a typical clean fretwork. And Peter took a piece of tracing paper, put over it, and he did a pencil sketch of it, and that was his version of it. And that's a good example of you know something that's got the Fasano spin on it. And uh, another example is we found um, in the archives you know, this neat basket weave and, and, you know, we really liked the construct of it, but felt, you know, what's the update. And when we came out with our grass cloth uh, collection last fall, you know, here's an example where, you know, we, we took some elements out of it. We exploded the, you know, the scale of it, put it on more of a, you know, uh, a brighter ground. And, and that's a good example of keeping the DNA, but, you know, updating it, updating it for today. So, um, you know, it's been fun. And, and so some of the things come from archives, some of the things, obviously, original designs, but we feel that balance is important. And, and there's so many wonderful things that he had done over the years that are still in the archives that, you know, we're kind of uh, reviving and bringing back on occasion. Um, and uh, I know you would you'd asked about uh, grass cloth at one point and said, you know, that's that's big for you guys. Um, yeah, and for us, you know, for grass cloth, um, and this is actually one more example of a fabric where this was a, a tree of life. And we found an old document on a very dark kind of blanket that we got at, at Brimfield. And we recolored it and reimagined it in a way that you probably wouldn't typically do for such a traditional design. And this is sold wonderfully as an outdoor. People said, you know, we love outdoor we haven't had a lot of it and this is our number one seller you know as an outdoor fabric so again we're putting our twist on it um but grass cloth is is a category we had not been in you know wallpaper has been uh, a big category for us obviously grass cloth grass cloth has become big in the last you know handful of years and one of the things we noticed as we looked at the category was most of the grass cloth out there was done with minimalist design you know a lot of it was the grass itself was the hero. The design was kind of set back secondarily. And, and we said, um, you know, why, why does it have to be that way? You know, why not be bold? We're, we're about bold pattern, bold color. So we said, let's go have some fun with this. And, and it was a little bit of a, you know, taking a chance, kind of like the bold color we did. We, we put our bet on it in 2018. You know, neutrals were still in. Everyone was hoping color was coming back. And we doubled down and went with a lot of bold color, bold patterns. And sure enough, last year it really came to fruition, and and you know things really took off with people's appetite for color. So, with grass cloth, we did a bit of the same thing, but we started with you know let's not just do simple grounds. What are the fun grounds out there uh, and substrates that that are offered? Everything from this is just a typical 
uh, cream sisal. And so we, we exploded one of our popular fabric patterns on it. Um, that tree of life we put on again, kind of a, a natural sisal here. Uh, that raw jute we talked about, we said, this is kind of fun. It, it'll it lends itself. We thought to this one pattern, but let's, let's have it be a great one. Um, we had, we found a couple of other sisals, you know, these great dyes. So this is a Marine blue and an indigo. Um, and we just, we really had a blast. We, we had so many different, you know, types that we explored and this is a plum, which is just kind of a neat one. And, and so the, the sisal is already dyed that way. And so we put, you know, this, uh, this same color pattern on it. Um, we have this, this fun metallic paper, which I don't know if you can see, and, and we, we're big on metallics, most of them subtle, but uh, this is an example of, of a traditional floral with a little bit of metallic to it. Uh, mm -hmm. We call this our, our disco paper. You know, you can see here quite a lot of fun to it. You know, when it's static, it's not too much, but as you kind of move your head and look at it in different ways, it's fun. And this is actually a linen string with some metallic uh, particles in it. Um, that same linen string, just in a different colorway, and we softened our Jaipur pattern on it, you know, which, you know, not everything's being bold. Uh, we've got some different paper weaves. This is kind of a very, you know, ethnic one for this great woodblock pattern. Um, and you can kind of see here. So it's all, for people who may not be familiar, all the, uh, you know, the grass cloth we're talking about, they're all hand woven. And, and a lot of it's done in Asia. And, you know, if you can watch videos of women literally feeding on the strands of, of grass or paper onto these kind of long metal fingernails and they set up the weave and, and it's all, you know, for the most part done by hand. This is uh, another paper weave that's got flex in it. So it's kind of this mottled ground, which is, is great for the voided areas um, in the print. Um, and one thing to note for everybody watching that the Pisano brand is carried in all four Roselli showrooms. So it's in New York, Chicago, DC, and Florida. So if you can't see these papers, clearly, definitely yes. come into the showroom because it's <laughs> beauty over the screen. Absolutely. So. And you guys are wonderful in New York and Florida. Um, you know, this cross, this grass cloth is, is you know, right behind the sample desk and is wonderful to see it installed. Um, so anyway, that's been a, it's been a neat category. And, and over the last year, uh, not only is wall covering take off, but uh, taken off, but so grass cloth has, and it's big. I mean, we were running, you know, grass cloth around the clock uh, and printing it. So it's been neat and, uh, and we've got more coming soon. So great to know. This is amazing. All the stuff that you guys do with maintaining the integrity of the original Pisano look and putting your twist on it to bring it updated, keep the appeal and keep people interested. It's definitely working. But let's talk about what people are here to talk about the custom capabilities that the Peter Pisano brand offers. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and custom has been something that the brand has been synonymous with for a long time. And, and Peter was always known for his custom capabilities. He loved it as an artist. He was always saying, I want to take on the things that no one else wants to do. That was always his love of the challenge, so to speak. And, and I won't name it. It's a, a very high profile designer who once said, quoted an article, you know, I tell my team all the time, if they can't find it anywhere else, call Peter, he'll make it for you. And, and you know, it's, it's uh, you know, Peter Webster and I taking over the business, you know, we're both people who we think have, you know, a good point of view and, and, and good taste. But, you know, we really, even though we're not artists um, ourselves, we really, we've really, you know, dove into that with two feet and said, let's keep up that, that enthusiasm. And, and both Pete and I love the idea of, of creating, of customizing, and it's one of the benefits of having, um, you know, our production in house. So, you know, that's that's what gives us the ability to do it. Uh, but ability and passion are two different things. And and so we still, you know, love having people come with fun, you know, projects. And and the, the more challenging, the better. And and this is one. Um, and just kind of give people an overview. You know, we we sometimes say we can do everything, and we can everything from changing a color to bespoke designs. We we sometimes will. Well, watercolor custom designs for people. In fact, we um, uh, had a woman who was a designer in Boston and she was she did a lot of media rooms. And so she would do sound paneling over, you know, speakers and things like that. And and uh, she had a project in, and was trying to think of a, of a cool pattern. And she happened to be walking by a store, you know, in the city at night, it was like dusk, 6 p.m. And it was kind of dark and anyway, she loved 
the carpet she saw in this one retail store that was closed. So she took a picture through the window, it's kind of at an obtuse angle, it's a little bit dark, sent it to us and said, I want you to make a pattern of this. And I want you to put it on this kind of open weave polyester that works for, for speakers and, and sound panels. And, and we said, okay, this will be interesting. So we got to work and we couldn't even really decipher what the colors were. And, but anyway, we had our artisans you know, start to sketch it out. So first it was hand sketched then when you know she approved kind of the basic you know architecture of it then we started watercoloring it and then there were several rounds of getting the colors to exactly what she wanted since you know it wasn't very clear from the photo but uh, and then the hard part came of hand screen printing it onto an open weave acrylic and it was very challenging to get you know good registration on it but so we had a, we had pictures of a couple of our artists sitting in there with fine you know, brushes, touching up pieces of it. But that's an example of probably, you know, one of our more bespoke uh, designs, um, you know, but sometimes it can be intimidating if you walk into a designer's office for meeting and say, you know, we can do custom, we can do anything you want. You know, most people kind of like, that's too much for me to, you know, to think about. And, and it's great, you know, if you've got that need, but more often than not, you know, what people want is to change a color, change the fabric, right cloth that it's on or from wallpaper to grass cloth or vice versa. So I'll show you a couple of examples of, of some projects and things that we can do. Um, and I'm going to have a little fun on the, the screen here. Um, there you go. Whoa, hey. that, uh, that did not work out so well. I'm not quite sure <laughs> we were testing it. it. It went on the background, but uh, let me try another one here. That's okay. That's not working so much. Well, I'll, I'll do it even though it's, it's kind of very futuristic here. You know, here's an example of our pizza pattern. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was working when you and I tested it a minute ago. Uh, but anyway, you can uh, see here, we could take this pattern of the indigo, we could take one of our greens, you know, we can make it green, uh, we can make it whatever color. So what a lot of people do is take a Peter Fasano color and and they'll say, you know, take your color, your Bahama color from another pattern and let's, you know, recolor the Picha. Um, I don't know if my chair is the one that's doing it. Uh, or we could take a design, oh, here we go again. And, you know, you can see the dot in here yeah. and we could change, you know, we've had people who take the same design and all of a sudden they will color the dot, um, there we go. There so you can say, I just want to change that one color and people will will send in, you know, a memo of it and they'll have stickies and arrows saying, I want the color from this one inserted in that dot and, and so on. Um, let's see if this will stick out. We can also take- um, I think it might be your setting if you don't have a, you might have to change it to- I Oh, I, it's right, sorry, here we go. I have a green okay. screen, doesn't it? Da, 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 da. Um, and now try it. Okay. Well, it's not letting me do that, but um, anyway, we'll uh, we'll keep going. But one more I wanted to show is, you know, we could take. Uh, if people aren't laughing too hard, um, you know, we can take. This is one that we have in the line. It's Corey with with, you know, the white um, paint. There, we can also reverse it and do the inverse. Um, and then the last thing is, this is our spattered ash pattern. Um, and if you want, people could explode the the scale of it. And so we literally can change scale. We can change color. Um, and, and that's typically what people will do is they'll, they'll change one or two colors, um, and, and, or change the ground. And so, and here's a recent project. Um, we had someone take one of our grass cloth. This is, you know, a soft palette and our Argus pattern on a, uh, on a little bit of a metallic paper. And they said, we want to, we want to change the interior color here, change the border a little bit, but more importantly, we want to add some color in here in these spaces and so you know they basically said um you know if you can take the color a second here from the terracotta color from your trotwood pattern in that flower and add it into here and so that's what we did and um and that was you know fairly easy for us to do um particularly if it's one of our colors and saying take the color from that design um, we also, you also offer this that if people come to you with a paint chip or a Pantone color or carpet or fabric swatch, absolutely anything they have that they're trying to match to, you can easily correct. And we we you know we do it as a combination of yeah exactly matching by eye. We also have spectrophotometers right. that can get a scientific lab value of that color and we can work from there. Uh, but everything is our artisans ultimately is 
you know, using instruments, but also using their eye to match the color. And so for all our jobs, you know, everything's color matched by several different rounds of, of people, you know, coming up to us as the owners to make sure it's right before it goes out. Um, and, uh, and so, like you said, we can take a Ben Moore color, we can take a Pantone chip. We even had a client one time who said, I'm having trouble finding the color that I've got in my head. And so one day she called up and she said, I was pulling change out of my pocket at the end of the day and this lint ball came out. I'm, I'm quite, uh, quite literal, this happened. And she said, and that's the color I want. And we said, great, tape it down to a piece of paper, put it in an envelope and send it off to us. So, um, right. and then this is, is one from a, a longtime client of ours in Boston who said, I, I want the Trotwood pattern, but um, I want to recolor it, you know, and, and kind of these, almost neon -y colors. So, you know, again, there's nothing, nothing we can't do. Um, and, uh, and the last one I'll show, this was Tina Anastasia, a customer of yours in Southport, Connecticut, my hometown from Mark Finley Interiors. And so she was doing a show house in Palm Beach uh, a couple of years ago, and she wanted to use a couple of our patterns. So one is this um, Talia pattern and Another one is our Celestine. And so she was doing a coral Celestine and this amethyst. And she said, I also want to use Talia on a stool, but you know, I want to make sure the colors match up. So she said, I want to keep the coral that's in there, but change the eyebrow color to this amethyst. And so that's what we did. And, you know, here's what it looks like, which, you know, wonderful, wonderful choice on her part and wonderful fringe on here. And and that's an example where she took some of our custom colors for draperies and then had a coordinating fabric and, and did a little tweaking to it. So, um, and speaking of fabrics, you also offer that people could take one of your designs and move it to one of the other base cloths that you carry. Absolutely. You so, know, you know, for example, with the new colors added to it. Absolutely. So, you know, starting with grass cloth, you know, you could take this design which is actually a wallpaper as well you could put it on this metallic you could put it on any of the ones that we show and even if it's something that we don't offer as a standard you know we can source it you know because some people say we want eco-friendly we want a vinyl that's non-pvc you know we've got that as well uh we even have a type one vinyl that we we suggest for people if they're doing uh you know washrooms or powder rooms or a laundry room, if it's gonna you know, have a spa splash back in a kitchen, you know, we've got a residential vinyl that's the same cost as the regular pattern. So if you say, I want that wallpaper right behind me is Inverness as a type one vinyl, which almost looks exactly like paper and has the same weight, we can make that switch no problem at all. No custom charge on that. And then like you said, for the fabrics, we've got about 21 different base cloths that we print on and that we have as standard. Um, but again, we can source more. We can do everything down to cotton sheeting, which we've done for people. Quite a few people have said, we love this design and we want to put it on on linen. So, you know, if we don't already have the, the cotton poplin, we can source that. So um, that's very easy for us to do. Um, and then the big thing for us has been one of the big innovations was uh, about two years ago, we had a lot of people saying to us, um, you know, we don't have a, enough selection in outdoor. You know, we want to see, have access to more color, you know, more fun patterns. And, and one of our top designers here in Connecticut said, gosh, if we get hold of your archive, you know, of your collection and put that on outdoor, that would be wonderful. And, and they said, but the challenge we have is with printed outdoor, more often than not, it tends to fade. And a lot of the printed outdoor out there is using indoor inks right. on acrylic. Well, doing that doesn't make it automatically make it outdoor. And so we set out and we spent about a year and a half with a chemist and two ink companies to come up with our own proprietary formula of an ink that not only was UV resistant for three plus years, uh, but that also would stick to a hydrophobic cloth. So, you know, you can take um, an acrylic that's, you know, not stain resistant and print indoor ink, but you, it will not go on one that is water resistant. And so that was really the challenge. We said, we want a water resistant fabric, stain resistant, in an ink that will stick to it and be UV resistant. And that's what we came up with. And so we launched that two years ago uh, this spring and we had you know wild success with it. We basically uh, wanted to make it as easy as possible for people. So we said, you can take literally any pattern in our collection and we can make it outdoor for you with no upcharge. Um, and so it's been very successful, You know, over a hundred patterns to be able to put on outdoor with no upcharge was great and it doesn't fade. So uh, you could even put it in hot water. We put it in hot water with bleach 
wash it several times and it still doesn't fade, you know? And so it's been, it's been a big success and, and a lot of fun. And our next evolution of that is we're sourcing new grounds that are, uh, you know, giving people more of a range of textures and, and colors for that. Um, so that's, that's kind of what's coming next on that front, but yeah, custom, I mean, everything from coloration to just like you said, using different base cloths to different substrates on, on uh, wall coverings. Um, quite literally, there's nothing we can't do. And with all the innovations you've made on your highlight fastings and the performance fabrics, people can use them indoors as well. Absolutely. And so quite a few people well, use it as indoor. Dining chairs is a popular one, mud rooms. Um, so yeah, I, I think, you know, from when we look at the side marks, probably a third to a half are actually used indoors as performance, not outdoor. And that's part of what we're doing in our next evolution is getting more ground cloths that, uh, you know, look, simulate more indoor fabrics, um, which, you know, we've gotten that's coming out shortly. So it'll okay. be even more kind of indoor friendly performance. So now we're going to have people asking us, do you have those new fabrics? I know. Yeah. And it's, you know, I think yeah. the biggest challenge in all of this, we got the opportunity. It's how do you distill it in a way that people can easily communicate and remember like you all on the, on the sales teams of remembering all the things that we can do. So, yeah. No, this is great. Well, this is wonderful because we've covered pretty much everything you can do from people bringing you, you know, a custom design, you interpreting it in any size or any base cloth, yep. changing colors from within the Pisano line to bringing in paint chips, fabric samples, lint from your pocket, anything you can think <laughs> of. And, you're yeah. gonna follow and I think, and, and the most important thing is, I think that the, the biggest barrier to custom is, as you and I have chatted, is people think, don't always know how easy it is. They think it's wow. difficult, whether it's, you know, I've got to think up something bespoke and I don't have any ideas, which you don't need to. It's, it's, it's projects, you know, uh, relevant as, as certain projects come up and you're like, man, I wish I could get that color to match or get a coordination yeah. here on, on the grounds and things, you know, that could be done. But more importantly, it's easy. More often than not, our lead times do not increase, um, you know, for custom. There's a low minimum. So on the fabric side, it's 15 yard minimum. And then uh, on wallpaper, it's it's four or five yard rolls um, uh, is typically the minimum. So at tougher projects, it may go to, to 10 rolls, but um, it's it's very easy, particularly in the wall covering side. And if people are just changing a color and if it's a Fasano color or easy to match, the lead times really don't increase and, and the price really doesn't increase. So it's uh, we've tried to make it easy for people. That's great and it's wonderful. Because you have a team of experts that will make it easy for the design to go through this. That they, it, yeah, it, it's not always easy for awesome. us, but we make it easy for you <laughs> and the client. <laughs> and uh, you did cover a point. I just want to make sure that everybody understands that this custom capability also applies to your wall covering line. Mm -hmm. Right? That's excellent. That's good. Absolutely. So we can take, and very often we have people say, I want to take a wallpaper and put it on one of your grass cloth grounds. You know, if it's not already offered that way, that's easy. We launched some grass cloths that were uh, just grass cloth that hadn't yet gone to wallpaper and people said immediately, can we do that? And we said, sure. And we're, you know, it's obviously uh, a good reminder to us that I think we're going to try to, you know, have them across, you know, all, all the different uh, options, you know, all ready for people. But if it's not there, it's easy for us to do. That's great. That's wonderful. And I think you've already given us a little insight as what's coming. Is there anything? Yes. We've also, you know, we've spent a lot of time in the outdoor and, and people have, and we had the grass cloth launch and, and we're really hard at work. Uh, in fact, my next meeting after this is, is meeting with the, the creative team and, and we're, we're hatching our new spring collection and, and we anticipate several collections coming this year. So um, can't wait to, to introduce that. And once again, the Peter Pisano line is carried in all four of the John Roselli's and Associates showrooms, New York, Chicago, Washington, DC, and Florida. And Thank you very much, Reed. Well, thank you, Phil, for having me. This was great. It's, this is a pleasure to chat with you and, and to let everybody know, you know, kind of what we're up to, so. Yeah, excellent. And thank you, everybody, that joined us today, taking time out of your busy day. Stay well, and we look forward to seeing you in our showrooms. Thanks, everybody. Bye.